In this video, we're going to demonstrate ultrasound guided intravenous catheter placement using the bevel guide technique and an angiocath. The objective of ultrasound guided IV placement is to use dynamic ultrasound visualization to insert a sufficient quantity of catheter into a peripheral vein before finally deploying the full length of the catheter into the vein. The primary mechanism of failure in this procedure is mislocating the tip of the needle on which the catheter is loaded. Therefore, it makes sense to focus on the dynamic location of the needle tip and ensure awareness of its location in three-dimensional space. We can exploit a key principle of ultrasound imaging to allow excellent visualization of the needle tip. The bevel of the needle, which is right next to the tip, acts like a specular reflector under certain conditions. A specular reflector is a smooth surface which, when aligned perpendicular to the direction of the incoming ultrasound beam, reflects it directly back at the ultrasound probe. This bounce back ultrasound beam creates a bright or hyperechoic image of the bevel on the ultrasound screen, which is typically brighter than surrounding tissue structures, which usually create a more diffuse pattern of reflections. As the needle tip is located right next to the bevel, clear visualization of the bevel allows definitive and dynamic location of the needle tip and tissue. In order for the bevel of the needle to act as a specular reflector, it needs to be placed perpendicular to the direction of the ultrasound beams coming from the transducer. The preferred site for ultrasound-guided IV placement is the cephalic vein in the mid to distal forearm. The cephalic vein runs a relatively consistent, linear, and superficial course through the anterior lateral aspect of the forearm. In this animation, we're going to demonstrate the steps in this technique. To start, the approximate center of the transducer is positioned over the center of the vessel. The angle of the angiocath at skin entry is ideally between 15 to 45 degrees, depending on the depth of the vessel. There are two distinct phases in using the bevel to accurately locate the tip of the angiocath. The first stage of tracking the bevel is from skin to entry into the vessel. The emphasis here is on keeping the beam perpendicular to the plane of the bevel. To do so, the operator tilts the transducer to optimize conditions for visualization of the bevel. Here, the tip of the bevel can be visualized as a hyperechoic dot in the subcutaneous tissue. As the needle is advanced, the ultrasound transducer is translated at a similar angle to continue visualization. The second stage of tracking the bevel is after entry into the vessel itself. Tilting of the probe is less important here due to the echogenicity of the bevel head against the background. The angle may be either maintained or decreased. The body of the bevel is bright and hyperechoic in the lumen. As the transducer is translated proximally, the bevel seen in the lumen becomes smaller and smaller until it disappears. The smallest observable part is the tip of the bevel. Before any advancement of the angiocath, the tip of the bevel should be positioned just cephalic to the center of the vessel. When the bevel tip is visualized and positioned appropriately, the angiocath is then advanced into the vessel until the ultrasound beam cuts again through the body of the bevel. This appears on ultrasound as an enlarging hyperechoic object in the lumen. The transducer is then translated proximally again to visualize only the tip of the bevel. Repeating this process allows for real-time visualization of the angiocath as it is safely advanced into the vessel of interest. As a reminder, ultrasound transducers should be draped according to institutional guidelines. The steps will now be repeated again on a simulated arm to reiterate the relationship between the ultrasound transducer and the angiocath. In this first stage, from skin insertion to entry into the vessel, the operator tilts the ultrasound transducer to ensure that the beam is approximately perpendicular to the plane of the bevel. As the needles advance, the ultrasound transducer is translated with a similar angle to continue to visualize the bevel. After entry into the vessel, tilting of the probe is less important and the angle may be maintained or decreased to optimize visualization. In this specific example, the angle is maintained. After the tip of the bevel is identified on ultrasound, the angiocath is advanced until the ultrasound beam cuts through the body of the bevel. The probe is translated proximally to visualize the tip of the bevel again. This process may then be repeated until at least two-thirds of or the entire angiocatheter is in the vessel. 
Prior to advancement of the catheter over the needle itself, a subtle sideways wiggle without advancing may help ensure that the tip of the bevel is free and not snagged on a wall. We will now demonstrate this technique on a patient who is undergoing intravenous line placement preoperatively. The patient is first prepped and draped for sterility. The target vein is identified and the approximate center of the probe is aligned with the center of the vessel. Local anesthetic, in this case 1% lidocaine, is administered subcutaneously for patient comfort. The injectate can be visualized on ultrasound. The bevel of the angiocath is now advanced only to the point that the whole bevel is subcutaneous. The ultrasound transducer is now tilted away from the entry site to position the beam approximately perpendicular to the plane of the bevel. Here the tip of the bevel can be seen medial to the vessel. Small sideways movements of the hub are then performed to position the bevel directly above the center of the vessel. With the tip positioned exactly above the vessel, the bevel is introduced into the lumen of the vein with a subtle jabbing motion. The body of the bevel is seen as bright and hyperechoic in the lumen. As the transducer is translated proximally, the size of the object becomes smaller and smaller until it disappears. Again, the smallest observable part is the tip of the bevel. The process of visualizing the body of the bevel, translating the ultrasound proximally to visualize the tip only, and then advancing the angiocath to again visualize the body is repeated to guide the angiocath into the vessel. Now the catheter itself is advanced into the vessel. Sterile tubing is connected to the indwelling catheter and then flushed. The intravenous line is then secured and dressed. Certain ultrasound artifacts allow better detection of the bevel in the tissue. The metallic construction of the needle causes acoustic shadowing and loss of signal immediately below the needle. Reverberation is often seen when the bevel is imaged. It often resembles an upside-down triangle or a beard extending below the bevel. It's a useful marker of the middle and widest portion of the bevel, and it can be used to distinguish the bevel from the shaft. The shaft causes acoustic shadowing, but doesn't usually cause reverberation artifact because of its rounded surface and short axis.